Hi, and welcome to the Lion's Den. I'm Tracy, and as usual, the activity sheets for today's talk can be found on our website. Check the video description below. Today is Trinity Sunday, and today we're going to hear a bit about a man named Isaiah, who volunteered for a difficult job, a job directly from God himself. From the Spark Story Bible, Isaiah's Call. One day, just like any other day, something amazing happened to Isaiah. He saw God. God sat on a throne. Angels with six wings sat next to God. The angels used two wings to cover their faces, two wings to cover their feet, and two wings to fly. They sang, Holy, holy, holy is God. The walls shook, and so did Isaiah's knees. Isaiah was amazed. God was more awesome than Isaiah ever knew. One angel carried a hot coal and touched it to Isaiah's mouth. Guess what? The coal didn't burn. Instead, it took away the fear inside him. Who should I send to be a prophet for me? God asked Isaiah. Now there was something new on his lips. Not a hot coal, but brave new words. Isaiah heard his own voice say, send me. Now, Isaiah wasn't a kid when he heard God's call and answered. He was a grown man. He had this incredible vision or waking dream that he visited God, who we saw was seated on a throne and surrounded by angels. And an angel, as God's messenger, carried a burning coal to Isaiah and touched his lips with it. But as we saw, instead of feeling pain, he felt his fear melt away, and that gave him the strength to say, here I am, send me. Over the centuries, lots of people have heard God's call and answered it in different ways. Some people led armies to victory. Some became famous teachers or healers. Others did very brave things that we will never know about. People still hear God's call today, even though it might not come in the shape of a vision or a dream. I've said before that it might come as a feeling about something that won't go away, or a sort of nudge toward doing something you might not have ever done before. Being called to do something can make people nervous. They sometimes don't want to stand out in the crowd, or are afraid of making a mistake and getting it wrong. Those things can make us feel uncomfortable. But, if you are willing to put your fear aside, and please do not use hot coals to do that, some pretty cool things can happen. Being called by God and answering that call can change your life. In Isaiah's case, it was a big challenge. His new role was to be a prophet, to warn people about what would happen if they didn't change their non-believing ways. He also told people about the coming of Jesus, who hadn't even been born yet and wasn't going to be born for many years. Isaiah felt bad because not many people listened to what he had to say or cared much about God even then. But the story had to be told anyway. And we remember the story because of our Bible, with everything in it handed down from generation to generation. Now here's a really cool story. Back in 1947, some shepherds were looking for some lost sheep in the heights around the Dead Sea in the area where Jesus lived in what is now part of Israel, and they stumbled across a big, amazing find. In fact, it was one of the most amazing discoveries in archaeology ever made. In a cave, they discovered hundreds of clay jars filled with ancient scrolls made from parchment. The writing on the scrolls was examined later and found to contain some of nearly every book in the Old Testament. The great Isaiah scroll was the most complete scroll they found, with pretty much the whole book of Isaiah written down from beginning to end. They were older than anything like that that had been found before. The great Isaiah scroll and several others with it were thought to be the property of an ancient group of Jewish people who lived in the caves a long, long time before. The scrolls matter because they are 2,000-year-old copies of what we call the Old Testament, so we know our version of the book of Isaiah is a pretty accurate copy of the old work. It matters because the writings talked about the coming of Jesus, 
long before he came to live on earth. And they matter because they help us to more clearly understand some of the early history of the Christian church. Pretty cool. Close your eyes for a moment and imagine what it might have been like for those people living in that hot, dry land so long ago. They had to make their paper before they could write anything down on it, and the letters were very neatly done, so clearly it was very important to these people to have their very best work on the parchment. It was hot and dusty, so they made special jars to keep the scrolls safe. The words mattered to them. Someone felt called to take all that trouble to create the scrolls and preserve them, and they matter to us today. What will you do that matters to God? It may be something big, but how you live your life and how you treat others and how you try to value what matters to God is just as important as being called to do something big. Let us pray. God, thank you so much for the opportunity to choose to answer your call and be involved in your work on earth. Help us to listen, to watch, to observe, and be ready to say, here I am, send me. Amen. In order to hear God's call, you have to be listening, watching, and paying attention. Today's craft is something that will help you with your observation skills as you head out into the great outdoors this summer. We're going to make a nature journal. For this craft, you're going to need two pieces of cardboard. Check your recycle bin for cereal boxes or pop cartons. You'll need some thicker paper, uh, like scrapbook paper or construction paper, or fabric in order to cover the cardboard if you want to. Some regular lined paper, some ribbon or yarn, glue or Mod Podge if you're going to work with fabric, and uh, some ribbon, um, a hole punch, and some things to decorate your journal with. So the first thing I've done is I found uh, a, the bottom of a carton of pop and I took my paper that I wanted to use first of all and trimmed it. So this is regular three hole punched lined paper. I've trimmed off the margins just to make it a little bit smaller so that it would fit nicely inside the cardboard covers that were made from the pop can carton. So when that's all cut and trimmed together so that it hangs nicely together, you're going to take your hole punch and matching up the holes that are already in the existing paper, put, put one sheet on top of your cardboard so you can measure where the holes go, and then you're going to take your hole punch and wiggle it in and punch a hole through the cardboard and then punch a hole through the other side, one piece at a time, so that you have everything lined up. Now, what I've done here to stitch the book together, I have got two pieces of green raffia. You can use twine or yarn or ribbon, whatever you want. And what I've done is I've, I've cut two pieces and threaded them through the holes here and in the center, and again in the center, and then here. So what I'm going to do is tie them shut to secure my book, but first, I'm going to open the cover and make sure that I can turn the pages fairly easily because if you tie up your yarn too tight, you won't be able to open your book. So once I get that the way I want, I'm going to just loosely tie these because if you want to add something more to your journal, you don't want this tied up so tightly that you can't get it undone again. So I'm just going to take a moment to loosely tie these for now. And then I'm just going to tie this one to the center here. And if I was working with my construction paper, if I wanted to cover my cardboard first, I would do that first before putting the, the hole punch in. But because the pattern uh, in the cardboard has these really interesting circles, I thought I would just work with the existing pattern of the cardboard and color it accordingly. So I've got uh, some stripes here, so I'm just going to take one more pencil crayon and I'm just lightly coloring over the cardboard and by doing that 
the pattern of the circles starts to show up a little bit more. So because it's a nature journal, I like the idea of keeping the natural cardboard color. But if you want to make a really nice colorful cardboard or fabric cover, you will just have to uh, cut the paper to fit the cardboard piece that you're working with and then put your glue on, or in the case of the fabric, the Mod Podge with a foam brush, brush it on, apply the paper or fabric carefully and make sure you have enough to wrap around the edges and then let it dry. But I kind of like the earthy colors of this and the pattern of the paper that's there already. So. So there I have my very simple nature journal cover. Now, you can put different kinds of paper inside this. You can add cardstock if you want to, uh, you know, get some flower samples and press flowers. And if you're not sure how to do that, there's lots of instructions online that you can find as long as you're getting your parents' permission to go online to look at how you can press flowers. Um, lots of ways that you can preserve different images. You can take pictures and put them in here. You can art, do art, sketch, whatever. So I have just worked with my regular lined paper and you can start with things you notice, the weather, the snow we had recently would be something worth writing down. <laughs> and just see what you notice. Write it down, draw a picture, take a picture. And by the end of the summer, when we come together again, you'll be able to share the things that you noticed and the things that you saw. So this ends our current Lion's Den video series. Watch for our Spark Summer program on our YouTube channel. There will be five videos posted throughout the summer to keep you busy and the activity sheets for each of those will be able to be found on our website. I hope you have a great summer and let's we'll, we'll look forward to resuming our program in September. Watch our website for more details on that. Thank you all for watching. Have a great summer, and we'll see you in the fall. Take care.